much. So thank you so much. So uh, as Oli mentioned today, I'm going to shed the light on the efficacy or the impact of leadership on the efficacy of hybrid learning. So we all know that although the hybrid learning has become um, a mainstream of all schools globally, the implication of its uh, approach uh, is not always easy or even successful. So, uh, and it is very crucial to understand the role of technology in learning and the sense of timing during the development process. And also the, uh, the degree of fluid fluidity uh, that could characterize, characterize this approach. And, and that is why I'm shedding the light on this, on such important and uh, essential topic. Um, so first of all, um, we are going to uh, look at the hybrid learning and we are going to cover a question that can the, can the hybrid learning be more successful uh, than learning in classroom? Uh, although uh, hybrid learning is a mix of e-learning plus classrooms. And the second um, point that we need to cover is about the effectiveness of education leadership, educational leadership through this question, what does the leadership uh, do to ensure the effectiveness of the uh, hybrid learning? So um, first of all, uh, I'm not going to really go through what, it, what does it mean, the, uh, the hybrid learning, but I want to just to highlight what does the research say about the uh, hybrid learning. Um, Hybrid learning, of course, it's a model of learning and it is actually solving a problem and most it is uh, given is it's a solution of um, um, a very critical time uh, during the pandemic time. So it's it has become um, an essential implementation to all schools uh, over the world. So it's a, it's a model uh, that has content, and this content uh, includes a variety of media, including, which includes no limited to uh, tradition, um, traditional classrooms or resources, web-based, computer-based, and so forth. And the implication or the application of the hybrid learning can actually improve students' higher order thinking uh, skills if we are implementing it in the in an effective way and that is our topic today and on the other hand it's still uh, there are still areas of uh, improvement um through the integration of application that can, uh, prepare the uh, schools mostly high schools uh, to complete the industrial revolution based on an um, a research study by uh, Duyuani, uh, Sonarto, Teresi um, Sagirani, Tan Amelia, Giulianto, Imantara, 2020. So it's really important then to, uh, to very, to consider also the limitation of the hybrid learning since we are now working on developing this such important model and we are in a big need of making it uh, successful. So if we are talking about hybrid learning, we're talking about the online learning, and we are talking about classroom. If we are a leader or we are leadership, leaders in the leadership team, we have to consider advantages and these advantages so that we are filling the gaps of such important uh, element in our uh, learning process. The advantages, of course, of the online learning, the flexibility of time, location now, our students are able to um, access to the resources whenever they want, the time they want, they may even when they are absent, they can be always linked and connected to the lesson. And it is more effective when it is, as that's why it is more effective when it is with a cures during or after uh, or even before the class. And the effectiveness, also the cost uh, does uh, matter here. This advantage at the moment we are facing um, uh, less motivation from the students, um, more motivation, uh, although there is a big motivation from teachers and educators, uh, but with our students globally, there is problem with interaction. And that is for sure because of 
because it's a new model. It is not has been not been before uh, practiced as uh, fully practiced as now, and um, and that results on high drop of rate uh, of, of the motivation on even in some places the uh, the attainment and even the outcomes were not uh, they were very concise prioritized and um there is a problem also with the uh, assessment um the, the there is a lower control of the assessment and we have um let's say it it does require a high level of self regulation and uh, the issue now that we are facing is that the students uh, need really to be uh, more independent learners and between that shift we have to consider thinking about strategies methods that can be implemented to make the um, regulated or to make the self-control or even students be independent learners and own really their uh, learning during that time so on the other hand we have got traditional classroom which is classroom space, face-to-face, -face, let's say, and it's that includes the hybrid learning. The face-to-face, -face, of course, uh, has a very good impact on our students. Um, the social socialization is, is there, and that gives, that shortens the time of, um, let's say, um, of being bored or being not concentrated because there are other things that can uh, interacts with the students and makes him even um, learning better. So the environment now of, of, of the, the, the learning environment has changed uh, totally. And the collaboration, um, now, now the teachers and the educators um, are working on that, but still we need as leaders to work on, on that uh, massively. And we, do, we have tutor-led instruction as well. The disadvantage, of course, it is always scheduled, is fixed schedules, um, and the um, we have specific times of studies, of course, and we have um, some. Always, we do have some issues with logistics, uh, operational logistics. Now, uh, with with the students coming to schools, it is becoming more logistics issues than before because we are uh, through a, a very critical time, which is the pandemic, and we have to make sure the safety of the students, the well-being of the students, and also the teachers and the staff. So, um, and to make sure that happen uh, effectively, so we're gonna start, we have three or four, we have, let's say, uh, three but four, let's say, uh, stakeholders. We do have students in the scope. We have parents who have to be there. We have teachers and we have leaders who need to ensure that students, parents, teachers are linked together to make the hybrid learning very effective. So how is that gonna happen? This is our question. So here the, will come the role of the leadership and how, in, how the leadership ensures that uh, hybrid learning is more effective than even before. So uh, we have, first of all, to um, involve the all stake, uh, stakeholders in the process and um, of setting up the hybrid learning. How we do that? Well, we have to review the issue, first of all, faced during the online learning, when it was 100 online learning um, du during the lockdown and uh, areas of success uh, by allowing teachers, parents and students to take part um, in the process uh, of the implementation of the hybrid learning and um, designing models that um, would more would be more relevant to learners so we have to be we have to collect or we have to make the three the three uh, partners together and to do that we need to make sure that there is a, a level where the curriculum is reviewed the resources is, are also reviewed when i'm talking about resources not only material also human resources so we need to make sure that it's relevant to what we are facing now. Um, when the students are taking online learning, we, we did notice that, uh, and from the feedback of teachers, from the feedback of parents, that the work that the students navigate in class, in, in, at home, 
18, they tend to be load, workload. Uh, and when it is compared with the classes before, it is the same as before, but it tends to be for the students overwhelming. Um, and here we are, uh, as leader, need to reduce the scale and we need to bring up the uh, teaching and learning on board and start working on reviewing the curriculum, the, the, the way how we are designing the lesson, reducing the scale of the work um, that, navig that are navigated. Uh, and because the students, as I mentioned, they don't feel the same when they are at home. And very important to use the data and to look at the number of students who have been doing well uh, during that time so that we are when we are doing online uh, through the hybrid learning we are sorting issues here um because we cannot we need to improve that area and we can we have to ensure that our students are well motivated and are in the right uh, working environment so um, we said that using the data to look at the number of students who have done the work, who have understood, who grasp easily, who find it challenging, who doesn't, who do not find it challenging, and um, this is really, really important. Uh, looking at uh, when we are back to the hybrid learning in classrooms, we need to look at even the structure of the classes, um, the timing, um, the break times and the uh, social, uh, social concept here, and what can be added to the classrooms in, that, in such uh, different time. Um, on the other hand, we, are, we have to come up with uh, agreed strategies uh, based on research finding. At the moment, many schools are, are based on practices, day-to-day -day practices, and then changing it over and over again, we really, we really, as leader, need to make sure that this process or this flow should be in a right place, should be very effective by relying on um, research finding and guidelines. Uh, we should also ask the uh, students what worked and what did not work. And um, we should also uh, reinforce the independent learning through that process and let the uh, as teachers work with the teaching and learning um, team. Uh, for instance, they use the flipped learning that reinforce uh, what we call independent learning with feedback and be becomes something very, very thorough and, rob thorough and robust. Um, the results uh, we have in uh, literature review uh, uh, shows that, for instance, this is an example of, of, of implementing one of the very interesting methods in, in, in hybrid learning is problem-based uh, learning. And um, within the hybrid learning models that are together, and uh, it has been actually a proven uh, that, it, that it did increase students' higher order thinking skills. So that's based on the uh, research uh, findings. And um, it, so it is really important to look at the research findings because there are plenty of findings, strategies, methods that really serves and fit into our areas. And, um, and we have to plan strategically the, uh, with parents and teachers and, and look at the data from students. And we have to work on teachers um, let's say, and students' well-being, um, support teachers mentally and physically, uh, facilitate the uh, practice of the implementation of, um, uh, what is it, learning pedagogies. Uh, we can't expect teachers to uh, just, uh, uh, let's say, apply something and then with frustration, we need to be there, we need to uh, plan together, we need to facilitate uh, that to 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 uh, to avoid uh, hinders, to avoid limitation, to avoid uh, I'm not going to say mistake because we should have it and 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 from there we can learn, but at least to avoid dilemmas. Let's say um, this is for the uh, making, and then we have also the environmental uh, learning environment. So the learning environment we've got in hybrid learning, something called um, uh, physical and uh, digital setting. 
uh, for learners. So including all tools that have included tools, documents, and other artifacts. And um, so we have to ensure that would be included. The very important part for leadership to uh, focus on that is missing is building a community of learners. And uh, this community of learning would create a social network that can engage uh, students in the learning process and motivate them more. And, um, and the, through this uh, process, the leadership should monitor, evaluate uh, the students' satisfactory performance within the, uh, their knowledge mastery and the skills. So um, that's really, really uh, important uh, point that we need to uh, work on and we need to uh, make sure that it is, they are actually in our uh, loop. Um, we have to make changes uh, uh, to the environmental, to the learning environment. We are not anymore class-based, 100%. And we need actually, even we are, we need to uh, have um, a concept or mindset of changing it uh, due to the changes, the global changes. And we have to be uh, with the pace of what is happening. So we need to make sure that, that the changes on the learning environment should be reinforced through the critical investigation uh, uh, to students' perception and uh, uh, on their learning environment. And uh, let's say Dorman and uh, Fraser in uh, 2009, this is a study that uh, have got research finding that um, on learning environment, um, that uh, learning environments has also, it says that demonstrated a link between students' perception and, uh, of learning environment, between students' perception of the learning environment and their learning outcomes. So we need to make that relevant uh, to each other, and and then uh, investigating the uh, to, uh, investigating students' perception uh, of the learning environment is a valid way to improve uh, learning uh, outcomes. So, and I have here very important, uh, let's say, uh, standards that are developed by the uh, International Institute of Technology. And uh, they, 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 the, the leaders uh, should have, uh, let's say, th thought about how to raise uh, that learning and make it as, um, as good as before or even better, because now we are doing, we are dealing with hybrid, which should be even uh, more uh, inspi aspiring than before or inspiring than before. So to do so, the leadership uh, team need to focus on the, the standards um, and can adapt these standards and can even add, depends on the needs, depend on the priority, depends on the, uh, the gaps. So for instance, here in leaders themselves, they need to focus on equity for the, uh, this is all technology based, but when we are um, embedded or, in or included with the face-to-face uh, uh, -face or classrooms learning. So it will come something really interesting uh, because at the moment um, people are more, or educators are more focused on um, how I gonna make uh, the hybrid learning working, but forgetting to do that, we need to, consider element of men, a very good element or important element that have been already put in place for many years and have been proven to be very um, evident and very valid. And they cover uh, education or leaders, they cover teachers, they cover uh, also students. So for the leaders, uh, we have equity and citizenship advocate support we have we have to have visionarily we have to be visionary visionary planner we have to empower leaders we have to even create opportunities for other teachers to be in board on board uh, at the moment we can't just rely on few leaders now it's the time to create a zone for all teachers to become leaders 
uh, system designers, connected learners. So I want to I wanna, uh, give more, uh, let's say, um, importance here. I'm going to speak more about, let's say, system designer. So here in that case, leaders, uh, let's say, build uh, uh, teams and systems to implement and uh, uh, sustain and uh, continually improve the use of technology to support learning and uh, education, uh, educational leaders. And here in that system designer, the, uh, we need here as leaders to lead teams, to collaboratively establish a very concrete uh, infrastructure and systems um, that needed to implement, um, uh, let's say, the strategic plan and uh, we should ensure the resource for supporting the effective use of uh, technology uh, for learning and uh, give sufficient um, kind of uh, f uh, resources, methodologies, and plan uh, with time and the plan um, with what we have. We need to Thank also leaders by Sorry, under the umbrella only... of uh, system designer is uh, to protect privacy and um, security by ensuring that students and uh, staff uh, observe uh, effectively uh, and and are uh, maintaining or are using the data uh, and through the data we are let's say reviewing our policies. And through that, we are establishing very, uh, let's say, reciprocal uh, uh, partnership that support the uh, strategic uh, vision and mm. achieve uh, learning priorities um, and improve uh, operations. So that's for leadership. If I'm going here to uh, uh, teachers, oh, sorry, we have... Deal. Sorry, yeah. Teal, I, I, I'm going to have to uh, jump in here because we're running a little behind time. And, and the okay, a uh, anyway, so you have the standards right. here and I can um, link the uh, standards with uh, our presentation and really thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. I, I, and it's great to see you referencing the ISTE standards. They are absolutely superb. Uh, the thing that I um, sort of share an awful lot about. I also really like the ISSI standards for coaches. Lots of schools such as yours will have um, sort of tech coaches uh, working in the schools uh, to support teachers with what they do as well. And those standards for coaches are really, really good as well. Fantastic to be referencing them. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your presentation with us today. Uh, and thank giving you us so time. much for everybody. I really and appreciate it. And maybe uh, see you soon or see you next time.